Hello everyone, this is Pedro from Pythonista with one more video. In this video I'm just going to demonstrate how to run a notebook uh, in parallel. So let's say you have a use case that you have a notebook template that you somehow are running that sequentially, but you, you wanted to run that in a thread, not necessarily in parallel, but in a Python thread pool and I'm just going to demonstrate you how to do it by passing different parameters to that same notebook and run let's say 24 notebooks at the same time so let's get started so I'm assuming here that you know how to pass parameters into a notebook I'm not going to use this tutorial to, to do it but it's pretty simple we use the dbu2 switch gets and then you just have the parameter name and then a default parameter so in this case here is like the name is year month and then the default is 2023 so the year and the month and then i'm just gonna get that value from a uh from the whatever environment variable called year month and then i'm just gonna save to a variable i'm just gonna print here now and then it's gonna be 2023 for that, I'm just going to use um, Python string interpolation, where I'm going to give you the file path, which is in a folder. Uh, the data is the famous uh, yellow text trip from New York City. I have all those files here. I have files for the full year, for every month of 2022 and 23. So the only thing that's changing is those uh, six, seven, eight, nine characters. Um, let me just go back to the yeah and then I'm just going to just use Spark to load that Parquet file into a data frame I'm just going to do some quick transformations here at a column called month year I'm just then going to group by aggregate just to do some processing okay and that processing is going to take about 42 seconds to a minute. Uh, and then I'm just after that, save as a table in my Hive Matter store. And that's it. That's pretty simple. So let me just start my cluster here. starting here but I'm just gonna jump out to the, the notebook that I'm going to run that in parallel so let's go back to this notebook here <coughs> which is in this workflow so in this notebook um, I'm just gonna delete that I'm not using that yeah so I create a function here just to I'm going to put a notebook in the my GitHub and then you can do that later. So it just creates strings from 2020, whatever, first month and end month, just to get that range. So don't need to worry about it. It generates that list with the parameters that I have to pass to each notebook. So I have the year month 2020 through to December 23. So that's it. So now um, I'm going to import from Python like concurrent features, which is a module that does threading. Threading is a way to process um, uh, in multi threads on your computer. It's kind of like parallel process, but it's not. Um, but I'm um, not going to get into the, the details of it. I can do another video just to discuss threading, uh, synchronous processing, and parallel processing. Okay, um, and that's it. So, so this function here, uh, before, I have a function called run notebook, which passed the month, and then that month is actually the month year, uh, and then that executes a notebook, and then I'm just giving a timeout of 10 minutes, it, just in case that my notebook doesn't, my notebook calling doesn't timeout. So this dbu notebook, it's calling a notebook from a path. 
and then you, I can pass any parameter here. In this case, it's the month here. I'm just going to delete that. It'll be confusing. Uh, I'm using here because if you use um, a thread pool, you can pass a parameter of the maximum workers. Usually somewhere between five and six, then whatever the Python algorithm uh, decides that. But in this case, I'm, I'm just going to run those 24 at, at, at the same time. So I'll give one example. Let's run five first and then increase to 24 just to show you how it works. So and then to, to run that pool is pretty simple. You create a context manager here called concurrent.futures and then you call that method thread pool executor, sell how many clusters and then you call a different name called executor and then the executor maps that function and then pass the parameter which is the uh, sorry you pass a list with the parameters which is months to run and that's pretty much it my cluster hasn't started yet let's wait a little bit and then i'm just gonna run and see how it goes and then i can run after that in uh, all the 24 and see how it goes Let's wait for the cluster. Yeah, the cluster is now on. So let's run this notebook. First the function. And then this one. Let's run five at a time. So that's going to launch five notebooks. I think it's randomly passing parameters. Let's see, it's doing first uh, 2022 April, February. It's just like randomly sends jobs or threads to execute at the same time. I'm going to keep quiet now and just going to fast forward that you don't, you don't have to wait that. All right, almost finishing here. Um, can you see that some has gone faster than others? So that's because if I look at my compute, uh, this cluster, I put like auto scaling. So at the moment, it's running on um, three workers. So I put like auto scaler from one to three workers. So I think it started at one and then as you loaded more that cluster it it scale up to three that, that's why it's running faster those here like the beginning was running like at one minute now it's running like 40 seconds all right so i think it's completing now just i think that's the last notebook in front 24. imagine that if that took an average a minute that would take like 24 minutes. And then that's taking uh, from 6, 20, 33 p.m. Now it's 38. That took like five minutes, the whole thing. I still want running. And then always like as um, scale compute, you can scale up that to uh, five workers. You can do at the same time. And then you can set up for that cluster for this job like as a minimum yeah, it's finished now, like five workers, and then it's gonna run like maybe even faster. It's a, a trade-off in between speed and how much you're paying for a computer and how long it's gonna take to run your job. All right, and then it's, a, it's, it's better utilizing the cluster. If I see the metrics um, for the, for let's say for this job, for example, sorry, I do the compute. Um, if I do here, it shows like how much capacity of that cluster is being utilizing. It's not, yeah, it's barely anything being utilized for that job because it's three uh, machines that are working. But let's to finalize, let's go back to that notebook and then run all the 24 and then I'll speed up and then you can see um, just if you're curious to know. 
So if I put that to 24, which is the whole thing, and then let's run again, let's see how it goes. And it's gonna start all the 24 threads at once. There we go, started. I'm gonna just watch uh, and see how it goes. You see that, um, I think it's running now on, on not two instances, I think it's scaled down one. Um, let's see, maybe that's gonna take for the whole thing about, I don't know, I would guess three minutes. I've run that just before to record the video. Let's wait. All right, start to finish some here, but um, maybe it's not halfway through. So this one took 1.4, only for, for, for seven seconds. This one is two minutes too high running. Yeah, it looks like it's all finished. All right, if you have any questions, Put on the comments below the link to notebook and um, the link to the notebook will be on the description thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to the channel please subscribe like the video click the bell and thanks for watching again bye bye